In this video, I'm showing you how easy it is to mount a King's DC-DC charger to a battery box with a lithium battery inside using the included Quick Connect plugs. Now, of course, you'll need the 25 amp DC-DC charger and the battery box, and you can use either a lithium or AGM battery. In this video, I'm using a lithium battery, and I'm gonna use the AGM as a simulated starter battery to show you how this all connects up and works in your vehicle. You're also going to need some basic hand tools, some nuts, bolts and washers to mount everything on, and some optional bits and pieces that I'll show you later in the video. Finally, I've got a King's 50 amp wiring kit that I'll use to show you how this would be connected in your vehicle. Connected to your starter battery, snaking through and then plugging directly in thanks to those quick connect plugs. Step one is to actually mount the DC-DC charger to the battery box. You could go to the top, but I think it will look a little better if I go directly to the side here. It's nice and tucked away and easier to route your cables. So I've positioned the DC-DC charger right in the middle and I'm gonna use the four mounting points as a template for where I need to drill my holes. Drill them out and then use some nuts, bolts and washers to mount the DC-DC charger. I'm using these almost flush button head screws so that it won't impact the battery inside. So that DC-DC charger is nice and tightly mounted with some nuts, bolts and washers. The next part is actually to do the wiring, which is super simple. Once your battery's connected in here, your battery output can plug straight in to that Quick Connect plug. And I'm actually going to mount the other two Quick Connect plugs directly to the box as well. I'm marking out the holes for each of the Quick Connect plugs, drilling them out and bolting them on. All right, that's looking really good. I'm just gonna add two of these little P-clips, which actually help to contain the wiring, keep them neat and tidy, and prevent them from catching on anything while you're picking up your box, putting it in and out of the back of your vehicle. So one more hole and we'll move on. Right, that's looking really good. Now I'm gonna fit my battery in run this temp sensing wire inside the battery box and mount this on the negative terminal of the battery once it's mounted in. Then last but not least is the ignition wire. As I said, ideally this temperature sensor should go to the negative terminal. I'm gonna stuff the excess down into the battery box, then add this included divider to stop the battery sliding around or damaging any wiring. Before connecting up your lid, ensure that the isolator is switched off. Next, unscrew the terminals. We're gonna position the battery box lid, making sure that the red terminal and red wire and black terminal and black wire are connected. And don't forget your temperature sensor. Now that the battery terminals inside are tight, I can connect up the output of the DC-DC charger, then turn on the isolator. And we should see a light come on the DC-DC charger. So we've seen the lights flash up, and then we'll see the standard battery charge profile flashing. Now we can take the opportunity to change the battery charge type to suit lithium by holding down the mode button. Holding down the button for a couple of seconds, then releasing will change to the next battery type. Cycle through to whatever suits your battery. And it's that easy to have a working DC-DC charger connected up to your battery with super simple quick connect inputs for your solar and starter battery. The last wire to connect is the ignition wire, which is required for smart alternators or if you wanna make the most of your system. Now we're gonna do something a bit interesting here and actually connect it directly to a SIG plug so we can connect this to the SIG socket in the back of the vehicle. That way when it's in and plugged in and the vehicle is on, this knows it's on and charging. Once you turn your vehicle off, it'll cut power to this plug and disconnect the second battery. You may have to extend this depending on your vehicle and where you want to sit this battery, but I'm just going to use a pair of crimp connectors so I can easily plug it in and unplug it. Adding a small spade terminal that I've crimped on means that I can change or extend this setup if I need to in the future, but I'm just going to add heat shrink to protect it in the meantime and keep it as one piece. Final finishing touches. I've added a cable organizer to that SIG plug so we can strap it up when it's not in use. And of course, I have the strap for the battery box lid and we're done. As promised, here's a quick demonstration of how you'd set this up in your vehicle. 
If this is your starter battery, we've got the 50 amp wiring kit that I mentioned earlier that's pre-fused with ring terminals and comes with a quick connect plug on the other end. So you'd run this through your vehicle to wherever you want your second battery. Then it's as easy as plugging this in while you're using the battery, turning the battery box on and you're good to go. And of course, if you had a smart alternator and you'd connected up your SIG plug or any other plug, you'd connect that as well. Then the last plug is the quick connect plug for your solar panel. You don't need a regulator, it's built in on this DC-DC charger. There you go, a super simple, easy to connect dual battery system with a DC-DC charger and solar input that'll suit just about any vehicle. You can't beat that.